Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Croc, Legend of the Goo Boos. We finished all six levels of the Desert World, and now we're off to take on the second boss of World 3, Cactus Jack. So, same conventions applies here, that we have no Goobas to save. Uh, this is not gonna go well, is it? It better. Come on. Yeah. Throw me a bone, game. Yeah, can I save the rest of my 33 lives, please? I saved your 36 Goobas. What do you want? Anyway, very linear in order to get to Cactus Jack here, who shoots needles at me and spins around like a crazy man. Stay in the corners if you can, because, well, that's where he's going to not go. And then when he's dizzy, hit him. And he bounces back like a little cutie. He actually is very cute, if very prickly and very dangerous. Then he also spins at you, which is not fun. But then gets dizzy as well. Now to mix everything up. Now there's actually a description for Cactus Jack. The cactus plant is the one thing all Goobas find amusing. The Baron plan planned on taking over the villages with his Cactus Jack spell. So it's kind of weird motivation. In terms of what? Goobas are attracted by cactus plants, therefore turning the giant cactuses into monsters will make sure that all the gooboos are captured? I have really no idea. However, that is right out of the way, and now we can head on to the second secret level. Defito Burrito! So again, we are up in the sky, apparently. And we have devils... Oh! Come off it. Now the one, there really isn't much that I can discuss about Cactus Jack other than the, his weird motivations for Ban Dante to, in order to make something like that. That and it's called the Cact, uh, the Cactus Jack spell. What they couldn't make, he couldn't make up another name. Probably he wasn't bothered to, but anyways, I kind of wanted to talk about the uh, the bots. The boss cutscene so far. I will say that we're getting actually close to the end. I think we're we're about three quarters of the way into into the game. We're pretty close to actually taking on Baron Dante. However, the previous bosses, you can kind of feel that they have sort of emotions based on their grunts and gerbils and what have you. And that's kind of what I want to talk about. It's it's not that they're really evil, it's really just Baron Dante taking innocent creatures and turning them into big, huge... Um, big, huge, intimidating creatures. It doesn't mean that they're, like, severely evil. You never really get that feeling from them. It's like, uh, take Flippy, for example. He's a tiny little ladybug the first one second, and then the next second he is... A uh, big ladybug with boxing gloves. And he kind of looks around in a daze, going like, Okay, what just happened to me? 
all of them kind of get really sad. Chumley, on the other hand, is a ridiculously passive boss in terms of they didn't really do anything except for Baron Dante grafting a jetpack to his back. I saw you, Puzzle Piece. However, we can't get up there because we need to go swimming. Hey, there's more swimming. Who'd have thunk it? They'll put any excuse in putting up swimming at this point. Nah. No, I'm on their level. Get off of the hook. As long as I'm not on their level. These... Trident Dantinis or anything in the water that shoots things have a really interesting dilemma of not having a good way of shooting on a three-dimensional plane. They can kind of do it to a certain degree, but in terms of shooting straight up or straight down, they can't do it. So yeah, in terms of the reactions that, um... In terms of the reactions that the bosses kind of have for their selves... Oh, really? Come on! I'm right over the puzzle piece. But anyway, I'll wrap up my thoughts. That they're not really evil, they're just kind of dazed and confused about what's happening, and then they have this an indomitable, indomitable will in order to get rid of anything that is going to stop Baron Dante's plan. Pretty much brainwashing, not so much as making things evil. There we go. I wasn't jumping for that. God, no. I just need to hop. But that's puzzle piece number six. And now, we get to head on to World 4, the Castle World. Up at the top of this lies Baron Dante. But what obstacles has he laid in store for us here? A lot. See you next time, everyone.